What's going on, everyone? So in a shocking turn of events, Jamichael Green is still available. He's still a player that is out there on the open market. It's really not a shocking term of events, but this is a very good and talented player. Um, he is 33 years old, so he's getting up there in age, but he's coming off of a really good year uh, for the Golden State Warriors. This is a legit stretch style big. He's kind of undersized for the center position, although he's played the center position, especially for the Warriors. He's more of a power forward, which I completely get the Lakers. That's the late kind of don't need that. It's the last thing they need. But at 6'8, you know, 230 pounds, 6'8, 6'9, 230 pounds. Um, he's a guy that can play the forward position, and he's actually a legitimate three-point shooter. He's a legit stretch big. This is a guy who last year for the Golden State Warriors shot 30 almost just under uh, like a hair under 38%. He shot 37.8%. And this is a guy that's 37% for his career. Um, this is a guy that not too long ago was shooting 40% for Memphis. So he has value. Um, he's had a really good stretch the last like handful of years. So just to give you an idea, from 2018 to now, he shot 39.6% for the Grizzlies, 41.3% for the Clippers on 3.3 attempts. He then shot again for the Clippers, just under 39% on 3.8 attempts, 40% for the Denver Nuggets on 3.4 attempts. And then he had a Golden State year where he shot uh, just under 38%. So again, this is a guy that legitimately can spread the floor and have an impact. Now, Obviously, the Lakers still need a center. I fully expect the Lakers to sign a center. This would be, if you're signing him, would be your 15th roster spot, right? You, you signed your you signed Christian Wood or Bismack Biombo or you know whomever, DeMarcus Cousins or Dwight Howard or insert the center that you want the Lakers to sign, right? So Lakers sign that, they get that out of the way. And then it's like, well, what do you do with that 15th roster spot? You want the three two-way contracts, okay, right? Fill somebody in. Jamichael Green, he's a veteran guy, which I, if you're familiar with this channel, you know I love the idea of bringing in a vet with that 15th Ross spot. A guy that has been around, has been in the league, that it can make an impact. But I don't want a veteran guy that just, that can't play. I don't want a veteran guy that's just like, he's basically at the end of the bench just for the sake of being at the end of the bench. I want a guy that like at any moment you could say, hey Green, you're in. And he's up and he's making an impact, right? And this is a guy that's, uh, you know, he's a legit 3 and D guy. He's a guy that can play both sides of the ball. This is a guy that can absolutely get after it. And if Jamichael Green is your 15th player, pretty good roster, right? That's a pretty good team. Because this is a guy that was legitimately in the rotation for the Golden State Warriors last year and has been legitimately in the rotation for several teams the last few years. The Denver Nuggets, he was getting tw you know 20 minutes a game. The Clippers, he was getting 20 minutes a game. Memphis, he was getting 22 minutes a game. Right, Golden State, he was averaging 15 minutes a game. So this is a guy that legitimately is a rotational piece pretty much his whole year, our whole career, and a guy that has been a starter or quality blue chip rotation piece for many teams his entire career so if the Lakers could get somebody like that that can make an impact when and if he's on the court then fine but you also need somebody that is going to be an example set the tone for the other big men right because we have a lot of them right the forwards on on this roster you need a guy that is willing to accept the role whatever that role is Right, a guy that is willing to, hey, tonight you're playing 30 minutes, tomorrow you're playing 10 minutes, the game after that you're you're not playing at all. Sorry, man. You you're having you got a week of DMPs coming up, right? And he just accepts it, all right, and stays ready. You need somebody that has that level of professionalism, somebody that can have that impact, and somebody that can just be an example. Plus, it's nice to have a guy that'll get after it. A guy that, you know, will He'll he'll do the dirty work. He'll he'll play the the way that we need him to play. He can be a legit stretch big. You can play him alongside Anthony Davis. You could play him alongside Jackson Hayes. You could you know start him in a small ball uh, 
lineup if you needed to, right? Like, hopefully we don't see too many of those, but, you know, certain matchups, right? Especially the Warriors who don't have a roster, uh, don't have a player on the roster over 6'9". If you can go, if you're playing them, right, Jamichael Green, wouldn't hurt to play a couple minutes with him, especially somebody that is familiar with them, right? This is a guy that is familiar with them. He's familiar with the Clippers. He's familiar with the Grizzlies. He's familiar with the Nuggets. He's only a couple years removed, so those rosters are all still the same rosters. This is a guy that just has valuable intel as well, right? It's almost You almost want to bring him in just for his intel on the other team. Right on, on the on the other players and stuff, right? Like, what well, what's the sets? What's the plans, right? So, I just think when you're looking at the 15th roster spot, you could absolutely do worse than Jamichael Green, right? Like now, if the Lakers could sign, like let's say the Lakers do, let's say best case scenario, let's say the Lakers sign Christian Wood, cool, right? You don't really need Jamichael Green at that point, but you or at least from a player standpoint. Because it's like Christian Wood, he's more of a four than he is a five, and it's just already clunky there. Now, if you want to just bring him in solely as a vet guy and just a guy that, again, that's just there to stay ready, then cool. But if you end up also being able to get Bismack Biombo on top of um, getting Christian Wood, then yeah, there's no, there's no point. But I'm saying, like, say Biz signs somewhere else, the Lakers get Christian Wood, or vice versa, Christian Wood signs somewhere else and Biz and the Lakers get Biz, then I don't think it hurts to bring in Jamichael Green. I think he makes sense for this Lakers team and this Lakers roster. Right? Like the the thing that the Lakers need is another solid vet. Like I've talked about it. The, like the Jared Dudley. Why does the Miami Heat pay Udonis Haslam just to be a guy on the on, on the bench? You know, why did the Lakers pay Jared Dudley, knowing he wasn't really going to play just to be on the end of the bench. Because there's value in those guys, right? Yes, LeBron James is a vet. LeBron James is a guy that's been there, done that in every sort of way. But it's a lot easier to relate yourself to a journeyman or a guy that's just like a role player or a borderline all-star guy or whomever. That's why I've talked about like Rudy Gay being another piece then it is LeBron James who's arguably the best player, if not the best player, to ever play the game of basketball. There are levels to this. None of those, none of the guys on the Lakers roster are probably ever coming close to the status and level of LeBron James. So when LeBron tries to relate to you, it, it's hard to relate. Like if you're a guy that's, you know, living in a studio apartment and you're you know, eating top ramen every day, and you know you're you're talking to a billionaire that doesn't understand what the struggle is, like, it's hard to relate to that. You know, it's like, well, what did you do today? Well, I, you know, I, I walked to the bus stop, I got in the bus, I ate Top Ramen, and, you know, my electricity's turned off. And it's like, well, that sucks. Like, I'm jumping on my yacht and going to my island, and it's like, all right, cool. Like, there's no relation there. But if you get a guy that has been like, hey, man, like, you know, I've been there. I'm with you. I fully get it. You know, I'm not in that type of struggle right now, but I got it here. You know, I'm a, I'm the vet. I, I went through the struggle to get to the point at this point in my career where I can help guide you to get to where I'm at, to where, you know, you're, you had a successful career. You had longevity in this league, all of that, right? Like that's what is easier to compare to for these guys. You know, even if they're better than Jermichael Green, it's still more relatable than the, the superstar. You know, most of us can't relate to, you know, Brad Pitt's life. <laughs> you know, like we just can't. But we can relate to, like, I can relate to another influencer. I can relate to more you, right? Like, I'm just a guy. I, so if you and me are having a conversation, we're relatable. I'm just some dude. Like, I just make videos. Like, I'm not some big name or anything like that, right? There's relatability here. So I, I that's why I always talk about bringing that vet guy in. And I think Jamichael Green makes a lot of sense to be that guy. A guy that can come in, play his role, do what is asked of him. When he is in the game, you know he's going to play hard. You know he's going to work hard. You know he's going he's gonna to do what you need to do. Um, you're bringing him in on a non-guaranteed deal anyway, right? So if you need to, you can always waive him. If it doesn't work out, you just let him go. Or, you know, if a marquee guy becomes available... In, in the buyout market or something, you're not 
giving away a guy that you might need more or you know, giving away one of your young guys or something like that to, to bring this guy in because you're trying to win a championship. No, you're, you're bringing in Jermichael Green. It's like, hey, you know what? This guy over here became available. Let's, uh, let, let's sit and, and talk and see if we can work something out, right? Or, or he just becomes a contract that you can add to some tradable salary. Gives you a flexibility. So I think if, if Jermichael Green is willing to come in and accept his role, I imagine he's going to want to go to a place that he can play, right? But the Lakers have a real chance of winning an NBA championship. And I'm sure at 33, he would like to, you know, get himself some more hardware, right? Um, but anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Like the idea of bringing in Jermichael Green? Do you think no? Um... No, do you want to bring somebody else in? I have a feel whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below.